This video is the first in a three-part series designed to help Indiana FFA and 4-H soil judges prepare for their area soils contest. In the titles of each of these three segments, I refer to myself as the soil nerd. This is a marketing ploy, plain and simple. I have included soil nerd in the titles to make it easier for you to search for and find these videos. In reality, I am not a nerd at all. In this video, part one of three, we will go over the left side of the Indiana Soils CDE scorecard. In part two, we will go over the right side of the Ag Site scorecard, and in part three, we will look at the right side of the Home Site scorecard. Indiana Soil Judging Career Development Event. For rules and guidelines for preparing for this event, refer to the Indiana Soil CDE website. To find this website, Go to a search engine and type in Indiana Soil CDE. Once on this website, you will find a number of resources that will be helpful in preparing for this event. In the resources section, you'll find the Soil CDE Scantron instructions, blank Soil CDE Scantron answer sheets. You'll also find Indiana Soils Evaluation for Agricultural Home Sites. This is a free downloadable PDF. It's 152 pages is a very valuable resource for preparing for this event. You'll also find the Indiana Soil Evaluation Scorecards for both home sites and agricultural sites, as well as Indiana Soil Evaluation Site Information Card. This is an example of the card that will be posted at each of the four sites at the contest. The last resource listed there is the slope finder, which you print off and then attach to the back of your clipboard or a separate board. And then by adding a string and a weight, you have a slope finding device. Now let's take a look at the left side of the Indiana Soil Evaluation Scorecard. These are the soil properties. These are the things that you will judge at the site. And then based upon what you find, on the left side of the scorecard, you will fill out the right side of the scorecard. Section A, parent material. The first parent material listed is weathered bedrock. You may see this parent material if you're judging at a contest held in the southern one-third of the state of Indiana. It will be made up of angular rocks and stones that are sedimentary. These may be limestone, sandstone, shale, or some other sedimentary rock. It will be a root growth limiting layer. The appearance of weathered bedrock in the soil pit has been described by some as looking like a number of books that are kind of haphazardly stacked beside and on top of each other in a layer at some depth in the horizon. Parent material 1B, till. The diagnostic zone will be a dense layer of clay, silt, and sand containing scattered rocks and pebbles that have rounded edges. This material was ground up and deposited by glaciers. It is common in the northern two-thirds of the state of Indiana and will contain rocks and pebbles randomly distributed, not in stratified layers. Parent material 1C, outwash or lacustrine deposits. With this parent material, pebbles, if present, are mainly rounded and found in layers. It will either be coarse sand that is greater than 0.5 millimeters in diameter or visible stratified layers of sand and silt. Parent material 1D, Aeolian sand. Here, the surface texture is sandy or moderately sandy with sand particles ranging from 0.1 to 0.5 millimeters in diameter. This is similar to 150 grit to 40 grit sandpaper. There is no gravel or pebbles. It is not stratified. And there may also be a clay accumulation in the subsoil that is moderately clay in texture. Soil parent material 1E, LUS. This parent material will have a texture that is very silty. It will be a topsoil and possibly subsoil that fits into the texture category of silt, silt loam, or silty clay loam. There will be no or very few pebbles. It is not dense and it is not a limiting layer to root growth. And it also does not have a stratified appearance. 
Parent material 2A, alluvium. This will be found low in the landscape as it floods frequently, and you will find one or both of these two following conditions. One, layers of light and dark colored soil material in the diagnostic zone, and this will be numerous thin layers of alternating light and dark material. Or two, calcareous material in the top 20 inches. Also on the site card, there is a line for weak soil development, and this will be circled as yes. Parent material 2B, local overwash. It will need to be greater than 20 inches thick. It buries a darker horizon. It is not on a floodplain, and the site card will be marked diagnostic zone is weakly developed, and that will be circled yes. Section B, slope. At each site at the contest, you will read slope between two stakes that will be set 25 feet to 100 feet apart. Typically, these stakes will be white, four feet tall, poly plastic step-in electric fence posts. You will need to use these two stakes and your slope finder attached to your clipboard and determine the slope of the site and place it into one of seven slope classes. If you need help getting your slope finders calibrated or learning how to determine slopes, a good resource would be a local soil scientist or your local natural resource conservation service office or soil and water conservation district office. Contact them and ask them if they have an abney level or a clinometer and can help you at one of your practices to get your slope determining skills calibrated. Section C, landform. An upland landform meets both of these criteria. One, the parent material is weathered bedrock till or less. And two, the soil has normal development. An upland hill slope will be an upland landform with a slope greater than or equal to 3%. An upland swell will have a slope of 0 to 2% and the area between the two slope stakes will be convex. An upland depression will have a slope of 0 to 2% and the area between the slope stakes will be concave. And an upland flat will have a slope of 0 to 2% and yes will be circled for flat landscape on the site card. An outwash lacustrine landform will meet both of these two criteria. One, it will have weak soil development marked no on the site card, and two, the parent material is outwash lacustrine deposit or the parent material is eolian sand with slope of less than or equal to 2%. The same hill slope swell flat Depression rules from upland will apply to the outwash and lacustrine landforms. Landform 6D, a dune. A dune will exhibit both of these criteria. One, the parent material is Aeolian sand. And two, the slope equal to or greater than 3%. Landform 6E, a floodplain. This landform meets all three of these criteria. One, the parent material is alluvium. Two, it is located low in the landscape. And three, yes will be marked on the site card for weak soil development. Landform 7A, a filled depression. This must meet all three of these criteria. One, the parent material is local overwash thicker than 20 inches. Two, most nearby landforms are uplands or outwash, not floodplains. And three, weak soil development is circled yes on the site card. Section D, surface soil color group. To determine this, pick a sample from the center of the surface horizon, moisten and crush it between your fingers, and then compare it to a Munsell color chart. You can purchase these Munsell color charts from the Purdue Agronomy Club for about $10 each. Once you have determined your color match, then put it into 
a category of gray, brown, or black according to this photo. All soils with a value 4 or above and chroma of 1 or 2 will be categorized as gray. Soils with a value of 3 or below and a chroma of 3 or below will be categorized as black. All other soils will be categorized as brown. Section E, previous erosion. To determine this, consider the top eight inches to be the plow layer. Now we want to compare the plow layer to the layer of soil just below it in the eight to 10 inch depth. If the area below the plow layer is topsoil or it is a lighter color soil but with the same texture and friable, call the previous erosion none to slight. If the area below the plow layer is greater than 75% topsoil and less than or equal to 25% clay accumulation B horizon, then we also will call previous erosion none to slight. If this layer in the 8 to 10 inch depth is 26 to 75% topsoil and the rest is clay accumulation subsoil, mark previous erosion as moderate. If this layer in the 8 to 10 inch depth is 0 to 25% topsoil and mostly clay accumulation subsoil, mark previous erosion as severe. Sections F and G, surface texture and subsoil texture. This is a part of the contest that is really an art form. It takes some work on your part to become skilled at determining soil texture just by feeling and handling the soil. You should start with an amount of soil roughly equal to the size of a ping pong ball or possibly the size of a golf ball. Squeeze the soil while slowly adding water. Work it between your fingers until you can mold it into various shapes. Sandy soils do not form a cast and are not sticky and cannot form a ribbon. Moderately sandy soils will form a good cast, form a weak ribbon, and will feel gritty and not sticky. Soils with a medium texture will form a good cast and moderately weak ribbon. They will feel slightly sticky. Moderately clayey soils form a fairly long ribbon and are relatively sticky. Clayey soils form a long ribbon, are very sticky. When you rub the surface, it is shiny or waxy in appearance, and you can form a very narrow ribbon with it. Perhaps the best way to calibrate your feel for soil texturing is to purchase soil texture samples with known textures. You can purchase reference soil texture samples from the Purdue Agronomy Club for about $5 per pound of soil. You can purchase soil with a clay texture, moderately clay texture, medium texture, moderately sandy, and sandy texture. You can get all five of those textures for less than $25. Section H natural soil drainage. For this we will consider the interior and exterior coating of a subsoil ped. If the ped is covered with a dusty light gray or white coating then ignore that for the purposes of determining soil drainage and only consider the color of the ped interior. On the other hand if the ped is covered with a clay coat that appears painted on and waxy, then consider the coat and interior of the ped equally. In other words, if that coating is gray colored and the interior is brown colored, then consider it to be 50% gray, 50% brown. If the topsoil is greater than 10 inches thick, then we want to look at the 6 inch slice just below the topsoil to determine soil drainage. So if the topsoil is 14 inches thick, then we want to look at the slice of soil between 14 and 20 inches deep. If this slice of soil is greater than 50% gray, then we call this soil poorly drained. If this slice of soil is 2 to 50% gray, then we call the soil somewhat poorly drained. If the soil peds in this layer are greater than 98% brown, then we ask ourselves, is there any gray colors in the top 30 inches? If the answer to this is yes, then the soil is moderately well drained, and if the answer is no, then the soil is well drained. If the topsoil is less than 10 inches thick, 
then we want to first look at the zone 10 to 18 inches from the surface. If it is greater than 50% gray, then we call the soil poorly drained. If it is 2 to 50% gray, we call the soil somewhat poorly drained. If this layer between 10 and 18 inches is greater than 98% brown, then we ask if there are any gray colors in the top 30 inches. If the answer to this is yes, then the soil is called moderately well drained. If the answer is no, then the soil is well drained. Section I, limiting layer. To be limiting, the layer must be greater than 10 inches thick. Bedrock is considered a limiting layer if it cannot be cut with a spade or dug into with a knife and or roots cannot grow into and through it. Dense till is a limiting layer. All calcareous till is considered dense till for this contest and will be marked on the site card. The Fragipan limiting layer will probably be the rarest of all the limiting layers that you will see in Indiana and if your contest is in the northern two-thirds of the state you will very likely not see a Fragipan. But you should take a look in the study guide in the Indiana Soils Evaluation for Agriculture and Home Sites and take a look at the explanation of Fragipans and look at the photographic plates of a Fragipan and familiarize yourself with what a Fragipan looks like. If you cut through the soil horizontally, like if you're cutting away steps down into the soil pit, if you look at the top of the step, you would see a Fragipan as prisms on average four inches or more wide when viewed from above. The material inside the prisms is brittle and contain few or no roots while the lighter colored light gray or white silk coatings around the outside of the prisms is the area where roots are able to grow. The last category of the limiting layer is coarse sand and gravel and this will be sand greater than one half millimeter in diameter and gravel layer that is greater than 10 inches thick. This concludes the first of this three-part series. If you found it useful, please let me know in the comments section. If you did not find it useful or if you have some other constructive criticism for me, I suppose you can let fly with that in the comments section as well. Thank you.